Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio, and I'm real glad that you could return for another segment. In this segment, speaking of returning, we're going to be speaking with returning guest, Dr. Andrew Miller, founder and chief operating officer of Karuna Therapeutics. He's going to talk about the positive top-line results from its Phase 3 Emergent 2 trial evaluating CAR-XT in adults with schizophrenia. Welcome back, Andrew. How have you been? Great. Thank you, Neil. It's great. Great to be back. Um, and obviously excited to talk about um, the recent updates around our, our Phase 3 data. Well, for those who aren't familiar with you as a, a contributor, when you were here with us before, give us a brief look into your professional background and, and Karuna. Sure. From a background perspective, um, I'm originally a, a PhD scientist by training. Um, I've been working in uh, the field of, of mental illness for about the last 15 years. Um, obviously, the biggest piece of that is um, through sort of the discovery and invention of uh, CAR-XT, our, our investigational treatment at, at Karuna. Um, and I've been working obviously for quite some period of time on helping to develop and, and push forward um, our development program towards uh, the treatment of schizophrenia as well as Alzheimer's disease um, with our recent phase three study uh, readout in schizophrenia. You know, from a company perspective, our goal is really to advance what, what we think are novel um, treatments for a variety of different psychiatric and neurological conditions, um, the first being uh, schizophrenia, um, and really the idea that um, when you look at the history of uh, drug development or, or development of medicines in schizophrenia and psychiatric illness, um, we tend to rely on a lot of the same fundamental pharmacologies and, and mechanisms that have been around for, for quite some period of time. And mm-hmm. I think by really trying to move beyond that, um, it really opens up the possibility of um, having tre- treatments with more broad benefits or ones that don't have some of the significant limitations that are associated with current treatments. And that, that's really our goal from a company perspective. You know, the company name Karuna um, is a Sanskrit word that means to relieve the suffering of others or to have compassion. Um, I think that's really how, how we look at it and, and what we're trying to uh, Give us a brief explanation as to what schizophrenia is, maybe a little bit about what it is not, some of the misconceptions. And, um, you know, you discussed this need for, for new treatment options for uh, expanded treatment in, in schizophrenia. Are, are these treatments going to basically build off of current treatments or are we talking about brand new treatments? Yeah, I mean, first, starting with that little bit of background on, on schizophrenia, I, I, I think you kind of framed it well. What is, what is schizophrenia? What is it not? I, I think there are, you know, can be some misconceptions. Um, and, you know, in, in some cases, you thought that schizophrenia is kind of the, this split personality of, of two different, um, almost two different people or, or two different minds. Um, you know, that's sort of a media perception, but schizophrenia is really characterized by. Um, kind of three symptom domains, um, what we would call positive symptoms or symptoms of psychosis, negative symptoms like anhedonia, uh, lack of motivation, social withdrawal, and then um, cognitive symptoms characterized by working and learning memory deficits, um, as well as executive function impairment. Um, it's a disease with typically onset, you know, in late teens, early adulthood, and it's chronic for you know, the remainder of, of patients' lives. And when we think about, you know, how that fits with current treatments, um, current treatments are all targeting um, dopamine and serotonin. They come from sort of the serendipitous discovery of the first um, antipsychotic medicine, chlorpromazine, uh, back in the 1950s. And that treatment is really focused Um, exclusively on the positive symptoms or symptoms of psychosis. There are actually no um, FDA-approved treatments specifically for the negative and cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia. And when you look at the current treatments, they do offer benefit towards uh, psychosis and positive symptoms, um, but there are, in many cases, a lot of residual positive symptoms or patients who really have a minimal therapeutic response um, to, to current treatments. Um, They also, because of that dopamine and serotonin-based mechanism, are associated with a number of what can be very problematic um, long-term side effects, uh, particularly uh, leading to significant weight gain, um, glucose intolerance, and other metabolic dysfunction, 
um, the possibility for what we describe as movement or motor symptoms, almost these Parkinsonian-like uh, syndromes that mm -hmm. unfortunately can become irreversible in some patients. So even when uh, their treatment is stopped, the, the side effect remains, as well as um, other side effects like sedation um, and, and a list of others. And so, you know, I think there's really the a need for treatments that, you know, can further address um, positive symptoms, could offer benefits towards negative or cognitive symptoms, or really things that would hopefully be free of some of those problematic, especially long-term uh, side effects of current treatments. How is CAR-XT different from the current standard of care antipsychotics you talk? It, it seems that there are gaps in between what compounds and treatments will work best for what patient. Does CAR-XT fill the gap and make it uh, across-the-board treatments available? You know, that, that's really our goal is, is you know, the hope that CAR-XT will be a very broad-acting treatment across those symptom domains. Um, and that's really based on um, the fact that it, it does have a completely different scientific underpinning, um, you know, rather than acting through monomines. Uh, particularly dopamine and serotonin, uh, CAR-XT acts through um, activation of muscarinic acetylcholine receptors. Um, so, you know, a neurotransmitter system that's been known for a very long time, but really hasn't been, um, you know, used for therapeutic benefit um, in, in schizophrenia. Um, that really kind of underscores that there are a lot of fundamental scientific challenges that exist in developing novel treatments for, for mental mental health, um, you know, in part because, unfortunately, we, we don't understand um, as much about the biological basis for some of these illnesses and conditions. And so from a, you know, medicine development perspective, that creates a lot of challenges about where you go and how you approach things. I think that's really been a fundamental limitation of, of developing new treatments. Um, you know, I think that's why we're so excited about, you know, our data with car XT because we feel like you know, we've made significant progress in that, and particularly with, you know, our positive phase two and now positive phase three data, really reproducibly demonstrating um, that, you know, we're able to see robust benefits on sort of the overall symptoms um, of schizophrenia, as well as specifically positive and, and, and negative symptoms with some data on cognition still to come that's under analysis. So it's part of why, you know, WorkSide it really is that uniqueness um, I, you know, the other uh, result of that novel pharmacology is that because we don't um, antagonize dopamine and serotonin receptors, we don't, you know, see evidence that car XT is associated with those long-term side effects of current antipsychotic treatments that I mentioned before, mm -hmm. things like weight gain and metabolic dysfunction, as well as these Parkinsonian-like movement disorders, um, which are really a big burden on patients, especially um, because patients really um, do remain on treatment long term for the remainder of their life. Well, concerning the, the phase three emergent two trial, talk specifically about some of the data. Yeah, absolutely. You know, with the with the top line data release, we're able to put a, a, a few details out there. You know, we were um, successful on the primary endpoint of the trial. That was the change in um, the positive and negative syndrome scale of schizophrenia. Um, versus placebo, we're able to show a clinically meaningful and highly statistically significant result. We had a p-value of less than um, 0 0.0001 on, on the primary endpoint. We're quite excited about, you know, I think the magnitude of that benefit also clearly being clinically meaningful and something that, you know, is very similar to what we saw in, in phase two and something we think compares favorably with um, the existing available treatments. We're also specifically able to see clinically meaningful and statistical benefit on um, both the positive symptom um, sort of subscore of that total scale, as well as the negative symptom subscale. Um, again, I think potentially a really important um, new advancement in terms of having a treatment that works both on positive symptoms as well as, you know, potentially negative symptoms. Um, and I, I think I mentioned, too, we, we were able to show cognitive benefit in patients who had impairment. Um, in, in our phase two study, we haven't been able to analyze all that data yet from phase three, but it really makes us excited about the potential broad benefit of, of car XT and again, not being associated with um, the long-term side effects of existing medicines. 
With this data in hand from your phase three uh, trial, what's next for Karuna? And talk a little bit about overcoming the stigma of schizophrenia in general. Yeah, I mean, I, I think from a development perspective for the company, um, you know, we're targeting making a new drug application uh, to the FDA in the middle of 2023. So we're working towards that. We have additional ongoing studies um, in schizophrenia. We're looking to collect additional long-term safety data. But really that, that next step is um, hopefully, you know, submitting it to the FDA and eventually um, getting approval so that we can actually put this medicine in the hands of patients, which is really the goal. Um, I, I think with respect to the broader kind of understanding and, and stigma around um, mental disorders, you know, part of it is just talking about them and making them more familiar and understanding, um, you know, what, what are these disorders, conditions, um, what does it mean for patients and, and their families? And the idea that, um, you know, just like cancer or, or other um, disorders and, and diseases, this is something that, um, you know, is unfortunate diagnosis and, and prognosis for patients, but we really need to be talking about that. We need to be talking about what it means. We need to be talking about um, how, how as a society we can, we can help. Um, and, you know, I think that's a big part of overcoming this thing. That's certainly part of what, you know, we think about from a company perspective is we have one role in that and helping, you know, hopefully to develop new treatments, but we also want to sort of elevate the dialogue and get people talking about what are these conditions, um, how are they treated, and, and how is society can be helpful. So I think that's a big part of kind of trying to break down some of that overall stigma that really causes people to, to not talk about it, to um, not want to go and seek, um, you know, health, health treatment for these diseases, which ultimately um, is obviously not in their interest, but not in the interest from a societal perspective either. Well, give us a website, Andrew, if you would, where we can learn more. Yeah, you can uh, visit our website at www.karunatx.com. That's K-A-R-U-N-A-T-X.com. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Looking forward to our next conversation as uh, things progress. Great. Thanks so much for having me, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest, Dr. Andrew Miller. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com healthprofessionalradio.com.